Colombia was once famous for its colour, its coffee and its friendly people. But for the past generation, it's been blighted by war. A year ago, Florilda Hernandez lost her son to one of the dark sides of this conflict. He was picked at random from a poor slum and executed. Soldiers then dressed him in a rebel uniform to meet a quota of enemy dead. Yo me pregunto cómo fue la muerte de él. Lo torturaron, qué le hicieron, por qué? Si él con nadie se metía, él no era un muchacho problemático. For more than four decades, tens of thousands of Colombians had been kidnapped or killed in South America's longest-running civil war. They have been terrorized by their own army, as well as by the left-wing rebels and right-wing paramilitaries it was fighting. Now, Colombia's hardline president insists it's coming to an end. Senor Presidente, hello. Thank you very much for the time to see us. Alvaro Uribe has vowed to smash the left-wing rebellion and re-establish law and order. Great. Thank you very much. His own father was murdered by Marxist guerrillas from the main rebel group FARC. Of course, this has been a great motivation in this task. And how close are you to defeating FARC? We are winning, but we have not won yet. FARC and its allies once controlled 40% of the countryside and even threatened major cities. Under Uribe's leadership and with help from the US, the military has driven FARC back into the jungle. Colombians are now rediscovering a lost sense of peace. Every Saturday, President Uribe travels to a different city to meet the people. Today, it's Via Vicencio, a three-hour drive from the capital, Bogota. Until recently, these people couldn't leave the city without fear of being kidnapped by FARC. Now they see Alvaro Uribe as their savior. They seem very happy to see you. And, and I, my happiness is to, to talk with our people. After decades of ineffectual government, Uribe is seen as the man who can get things done. But some fear he's not just threatening FARC, but anyone who stands in his way. Because for Uribe, like his longtime US ally, you're either with him or with the terrorists. Bienvenido, señor presidente. Colombia remains a nation with challenges, but the future will always be bright in a country that produces such men as President Alvaro Uribe. Congratulations, mi amigo. President Bush saw Uribe as one of his three amigos in the war on terror. In one of his last acts as president, he honored Uribe, John Howard, and Tony Blair with the Medal of Freedom. President Uribe's leadership has been resolute and uncompromising. Today in Colombia, homicides are down 40%. Kidnappings are down more than 80%. Terror attacks are down by more than 75%. The forces of violence are on the defensive and the people are reclaiming their country. The United States has supported Colombia since the 1980s, when it was seen as a battleground in the war on drugs. Police like this were trained to fight criminal cartels producing cocaine in jungle labs. Both left-wing guerrillas and right-wing paramilitaries battled for control of cocaine production. After 9-11, 
George Bush switched funding from cocaine eradication to counter-terrorism. And the effect in much of Colombia has been striking. These days, Bogota feels nothing like a violent war zone. It has a vibrant business sector, a relaxed cafe culture, it's even becoming a chic tourist spot. Colombians bristle at the stereotype of a nation of violent drug traffickers. The reality is that for the urban middle class at least, it's fast becoming a normal country. And until the global financial crisis hit, investment was booming. Here in Bogota, it's sometimes hard to imagine that in some other parts of the country, a brutal war is still raging. The battles are now being fought in remote outposts like this, the Amiga base at Macarena in southern Colombia. It's 4am and we're about to witness one of their regular combat missions a helicopter sortie to a Farkeld village. To minimise the risk of being shot, all will fly in complete darkness. A dangerous exercise with four helicopters flying in tight formation. Soon after the lights go out, our chopper plunges to avoid a helicopter passing just a metre above us. Within minutes, the other helicopters land their troops to pursue FARC into the jungle. By sunrise, we're heading back to base for an early breakfast. The atmosphere is coolly professional, more like a day in the office than a deadly mission. The new strength of this US-trained military has convinced the president he can defeat FARC by force alone. What will they have to do to be able to be part of negotiations? To cease uh, violence, to release the hostages, the kidnapped people, uh, uh, and to, to show good faith. So they have to give in before you'll negotiate? To cease violence is not to give in. To cease violence is to recognize the right of the people to live in peace. Que invitamos también a todos aquellos guerrilleros que nos acojamos ya. FARC continues to hold hundreds of hostages, people held for ransom or snatched for being class enemies. Their families hold regular rallies in the hope their plight won't be forgotten. Gloria Polanco was released last year after being held for seven years in jungle camps. She's come here to meet some of her fellow hostages who have only just been freed. She's also come here to forgive. While she was in captivity, her husband, a former governor, was assassinated. Astonishingly, she's found the strength to pardon his killer. Mis hijos y yo somos una familia de fe. Y no queremos guardar en el corazón rencor ni odio contra nadie. But President Uribe is putting force ahead of forgiveness. He's not only refused to negotiate with FARC, he won't exchange captured FARC guerrillas for the hostages, insisting the guerrillas are terrorists. We cannot speak about the exchange of prisoners. Those terrorists who are in the state jails are prisoners in the jails of one state of law and order. The government won international plaudits last year when it rescued the kidnapped politician Ingrid Betancourt. Hey! 
soldiers dressed as Red Cross workers to trick Farc into handing her over. But in most other cases, it's relied on force. A US-trained anti-kidnapping squad operates throughout the country, tracking hostages and, where possible, mounting rescue missions. But former hostages say that's the last thing the government should do in the jungle. FARC routinely executes prisoners if a camp's attacked. Yo no estoy de acuerdo con el rescate militar. No, de, en ningún momento lo aprobé. Es un riesgo. Y uno allá lo que quiere es salir con vida. No. Otra vez. Gloria Palanco's oldest sons were kidnapped with her. Perfecto. She lived in dread of them being killed. Juan Sebastian and Jaime were held in a separate camp for three years before they were freed for ransom. Delicioso. Es negociado. Es hablando, dialogado y que llegue a lo, a lo que todos deseamos que llegue. Primero, que sea lo del acuerdo humanitario, que es lo que deseamos para que salgan de la selva todos los secuestrados y que se empiece el proceso de paz. Gloria Polanco owes her release to a left-wing senator named Piedad Cordova, who negotiated directly with FARC. Cordova was herself a kidnap victim. She was held hostage in 1999 by right-wing paramilitaries. She insists the government should treat FARC captives not as terrorists, but as prisoners of war. This is a process where there are two actors, the government and the FARC, where there are prisoners of war, where there are not only the prisoners of the FARC, but the prisoners of the government. I think that giving the weapons significa precisamente terminar un proceso de negociación y eso significa eh, entender a la, a la guerrilla como un interlocutor válido en este país. Veníamos eh, viéndolo cuando saludaba con un poncho. In February, she persuaded FARC to free the last politicians they were holding. Verdoso, un pantalón azul oscuro y el abrazo así. Watching their release has been an emotional roller coaster for Gloria Palanco and her sons. While their mother wants negotiations now, the boys support Uribe's hard line. I think they have to keep fighting until they sit down and begin a true peace talking. You don't think they're serious now? Not really. Like they were before, not really. But they will. If, if, if the government keeps fighting them, they, they, they have to. That's what we hope. But some Colombians fear the military more than they fear FARC. Up to four million people, 10% of the population, have been displaced by the fighting. Hundreds of thousands live in the shanty town of Swacha outside Bogota. They've become targets for military death squads. What happened to Florilde Hernandez's son almost defies belief. Colombian soldiers murdered Elkin and 10 others from Swacha after luring them to non-existent jobs, then dressed them in fart fatigues. Como bien lo puedes ver en las fotografías, la expresión de él y todo, de todas. Él era un muchacho que era muy humilde. El de todo mundo se daba a querer. No sé cuál sería la causa, el motivo para la desaparición de él. The practice is so common, the military has even coined a term for it. Falsos positivos, meaning false positives. En Colombia es vieja la práctica de que para ascender de un grado a otro, para llegar a ser capitán o coronel en el ejército, es necesario tener una cierta cantidad de bajas en el combate, o, o presentar un número de personas que han sido abatidas por parte de los miembros de la fuerza pública. 
Ivan Cepeda is a left-wing writer with the group Colombians for Peace. He's been investigating the killings and advising the mothers of their rights. He has to meet them in a safe location away from the shanty town. Prosecutors are now examining hundreds of similar cases. Digamos que estamos ante nosotros pensamos cerca de 1500 casos de personas que han sido asesinadas por miembros de la fuerza pública, por miembros del ejército, presentadas después como combatientes que han sido abatidos en medio de la guerra. In that case of all positives, we do not hesitate. Whenever we know that is evident, that there is evidence proving false positives, we made decisions. President Uribe has sacked dozens of high-ranking officers over the Swatcha scandal, including the army chief. But there's little doubt this has been an institutional practice for decades. What's more, documents that were recently declassified from Washington's National Security Archive show the United States was aware of this practice from as early as 1990. Yet it continued to dramatically increase funding for the Colombian military. The biggest increase came from the Bush administration for the War on Terror. It not only knew of the military's crimes, Washington was also aware the army was collaborating with right-wing paramilitaries. They began as self-defense units set up by rich landowners to defend their properties from FARC. They became even more ruthless, massacring entire villages suspected of rebel ties. They murdered labor leaders, journalists, and political activists, including Ivan Cepeda's father. Los paramilitares han desaparecido 25,000 personas en Colombia. Han cavado fosas comunes, miles de fosas comunes donde han enterrado a estas personas que han desaparecido. He accuses Álvaro Uribe of being their most powerful ally. As a young politician, he associated with paramilitary leaders. Soon after he became president, they agreed to demobilize, though some have reformed as criminal gangs. Not a single senior figure has been convicted over the mass killings. <laughs> Cuando fue gobernador de la provincia de Antioquia, expidió licencias, permisos, para que funcionaran empresas de seguridad que se convirtieron en grupos paramilitares. The opposition says you've been soft on paramilitaries. Uh, they've even accused you of tacitly supporting them. Well, what relationship I, do you have with the paramilitaries? I don't know with the opposition. What opposition ha, ha, have you spoken why? with? because this is the government that has dismantled paramilitaries. Today, Colombia no longer has paramilitaries. My government has fought them with all that determination, the same that we have done against guerrillas. There's no hard evidence to link the president to any illegal acts. Even so, the paramilitary issue is threatening to become his Watergate. The Supreme Court is investigating more than 60 congressmen over suspected links with paramilitaries. The links include using paramilitaries to murder their political opponents and direct involvement in kidnapping and extortion and almost all the lawmakers are close allies of President Uribe, including his own first cousin. The president insists all the alleged crimes took place before he came to power. But are you embarrassed that so many of your allies in Congress are facing charges or in jail? No, your own first I, cousin is in no, jail. No, 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 no. I am, I am very happy to guarantee to this country a future of transparency in politics. 
The allegations of human rights abuse have so far barely dented the president's extraordinary popularity. He's due to step down next year. But he's touted changing the constitution to allow him to run again. He dismisses his left-wing critics as little more than mouthpieces for FARC. El brazo intelectual del Alfarc durante muchos años justificó al Alfarc. No vamos a permitir ahora que el bloque intelectual del Alfarc nos desoriente con un discurso de paz que finalmente fortalezca el terrorismo. Primero que todo, el gobierno ha tomado eh, la decisión de criminalizar la protesta, criminalizar a los opositores, eh, satanizar a la oposición. Esos alambres me los metieron a mí también un día entre las... Piedad Córdoba has received death threats from paramilitaries for criticizing the president. She never travels without at least three bodyguards, even to walk one block to her city penthouse. Her stylish residence has become an unofficial meeting point for Colombia's beleaguered opposition. Politicians, human rights activists, writers and former hostages. No es cierto que se pueda decir. Eh, se podrá decir al, al escondido o en la casa donde nadie oiga, pero quienes tenemos la voz eh, pública, quienes somos voceros de, 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 del país o del pueblo, de un segmento, y nos atrevemos a criticar Lo cierto es que la verdad es que va, nos va muy mal. Marginalized in their own country, they're putting their hopes on the new US leader. Barack Obama was already raising human rights concerns in his election campaign. Actually, I understand it pretty well. Uh, the history of, in Colombia right now is that labor leaders uh, have been targeted for assassination on a fairly consistent basis, and there have not been prosecutions. We have committed to protect them, and we have seen a great reduction in the number of uh, assassinations. We need the help of President Obama, and we are optimistic that the United States President Obama will continue giving support to our noble battle against narco-trafficking. Colombians have been through a generation of sorrow. For some, like Florilda Hernandez, whose son was murdered by the US-funded military, the grief will never end. But for Gloria Polanco, reunited with her sons, there's hope for a better future, in which the next generation will be spared Colombia's pain.